All right, everybody, we're here in Golden Moment Farm in the bush, and this is the all-star of our little video, the big bad maple tree. And I'm here with, I don't know, what are we gonna call you, Dale? The big field manager, operator, whatever. Uh, he's, anyway, he's here to uh, explain uh, the details on the maple tree and how everything starts. So going back years ago, they used buckets with a spile in the tree, and we are all pipeline. Uh, same idea, same format, drill the hole, you have a spile, but it's all in a pipeline, and then it's a closed vacuum system. But these are called lateral lines, it's 5 16 line, and they'll run to the main lines, which you can see here is this one inch blue line, and that's our main lines. And these main lines will all go to each of our pump stations, and they go into what we call an extractor, which uh, drops the sap into our torch tanks. But this year too, uh, on top of our normal topping process, we've added, uh, it's called a spider drop. And if you follow this line, we've raised this line 12 feet in the air to get to another part of our bush. And the reason for that is there's a snowmobile trail that runs through here. And the owner, John Banford, the farm, brings hay and stuff out of here. So we had to have that height. But in order to get that sap here from the other side of the bush, it come up with this spider system. And if uh, Corey zeroes in on these little lines going up, you'll see the sap racing up from this level overhead. And it takes that sap up 12 feet in the air and across back into our main line. But the reason they use these spiders, there's six lines off of each one, top and bottom. The, the uh, small amount of vacuum, which is about 20 pounds of vacuum, will take it up these small lines where it wouldn't lift it up the one inch main line. So it's a, it's a great tool when you have a bush that's spread out or roadways that's separating part of your operation. Uh, we tapped upward to 200 trees on this side of the road and these spider lines uh, allow us to get the sap back to the main tank and the extractor. That's awesome. Now that looks like that's flowing pretty good, is it's it not, Dale? It's real well today. Absolutely. Beautiful. And, uh, we're going to make some syrup. We're going to make some syrup and we're going to show you here a little bit, some syrup being made. Awesome. Thanks, Dale. We are going to move on to the next little spot. All right, here we are on our next stop of the tour at Golden Moment Farm. Dale, why don't you explain to us what we got happening here? Well, aside from the spider that you just uh, witnessed earlier, this is a new system too last year that we tried. So. This part of the bush in this 350 acres of maple farm, uh, we're outside of our vacuum system. And so we, it doesn't reach to this part of the back. So what this is, it's, a, it's just a natural system. We use a smaller line. This is a 3 16 line. It's a smaller top of the tree, but again, the same format. And these create their own gravity. So the lines, when you look down, the lines are higher at the one end and you just need uh, minimal fall to come to the cube and it creates its own gravity feed and it works just the same then as the vacuum system and it can create up to 10 to 12 pounds of vacuum on its own or uh, suction um, just be by virtue of its flow and you can see it flowing in on its own through the tubes here and at present we have about uh, roughly 500 taps uh, on this gravity line the uh, very back of our bush, uh, there's about 400 and there's roughly 100 right here in this cube. So we have five of these cubes, uh, four at the back and one here. And what you see in this tank is what's run overnight. So they run and they're pretty efficient, very efficient for, you know, just a gravity feed. Very nice. Another way to bring sap back to the sugar shack. Mike, our sap collector. He's driving around through all the bushes here at Golden Moment Farms, hauling sap back to the big sugar shack. All right, on to our next part of the tour at Golden Moments Farms. Dale, do you want to let us know here what we're looking at? Yeah, so here we're at pump station two. We have two similar stations. Uh, the first one's a little smaller. We'll give you a quick shot of it early, later. But uh, this station here has five one inch lines coming in. Earlier, we showed you uh, the spider back there. Well, it's one of the lines that's coming into this. And this black line up here, the main black line, that is the vacuum line. And this line 
believe it or not, runs all the way back to the sugar house where there's a vacuum pump and it brings the vacuum to these extractors that I was talking about. And right now on the extractor gauge, this one's running just shy of 20 pounds of vacuum and it's a completely sealed, uh, sealed loop. So when it leaves the sugar house and it comes into this tube, comes into the extractor and it's, this is a sealed container where all your lines come in. And if you want to take a quick look in here, you'll see some sap coming in. Not running crazy hard yet. It's a little cool still today, but usually this glass would be a third full. And when it comes in here, it fills one of these extractor tanks. Now, right now it's filling this fire tank. And when that tank fills up, there's a float inside. That float lifts, and when it lifts it, it dumps. And while that tank's dumping, this one begins to fill. So it only releases the vacuum from this tank and allows it to dump, keeps the vacuum on the lines and fills this one. And that just goes back and forth all day. And as you can see, there's the clear sap. And we'll gather it two or three times a day, depending on how much it runs and it gets taken back up to the uh, sugar house to be processed. Ready for Mike to come pick up another load. Yes, sir. This was just drained about an hour and a half ago. So hour and a half uh, ago, and there's what we got already. Pretty good. Good stuff. Now on these lines, so you'll see these five lines here, you'll see four more lines coming into another pump station. And on these lines, there's about 2,000 taps um, on the, this pipeline. And then the other five, a little over 500, are on the gravity lines. So this year we're up to about just over 2,500 tops. So Very we're nice. for a good season. Cool, cool. All right, on to the next. All right, we have arrived pump station one. Dale, take it away. Well, same idea here at pump station one as two, except for a, a little smaller extractor. Ex exactly the same format, but one single canister. But we also have four main lines coming into this one. And as you can see here, we have uh, just shy of 20 pounds vacuum as well. So we got four lines feeding this tank. It was just dumped about maybe half an hour ago. So it's, uh, it's, it's running okay today. It just hasn't warmed up quite enough. Uh, they're starting to trickle in. But when it is running, it runs hard. But just to explain the vacuum system a little bit too. And here's your vacuum line that comes in once again. And... Uh, or you can take a video of it here now, you'll see it. we're heading back towards the sugar shack. And uh, that black line runs right back up to the pumps, or to the uh, sugar house. But a uh, myth that's commonly known is people think the vacuum system and pipeline, that it sucks the sap out of the tree. Uh, actually, essentially all it does is it just creates a positive vacuum in the lines. And when we have to have a freeze-thaw cycle for the sap to run, whether it's buckets or pipeline, it, it doesn't change that. But when we have the freeze thaw cycle, minus five to six at night, plus six to eight during the day is prime sap running temperatures. Um, because the, when it freezes at night and thaws during the day, it creates a pressure in the tree. Usually a maple tree can create up to 20 PSI inside, it, inside the tree itself. All we're doing with the vacuum system is where this tap goes into the tree, it creates a negative pressured area and the sap tends to run there. And then we get, you, can, you tend to get more sap. And the vacuum then, just sucks it out of the lines to the extractors. But that's really how the format works, whether you got buckets, pails, or however you're doing it. Um, it's the same for big operations down to, you know, the person at home that wants to have 10 trees. It, it works the same for everybody. Awesome. So let's go up to the sugar house and uh, take a little closer look then at how we, uh, how we process this out. Perfect, thanks, Dale. We've seen the outside operation at Golden Moment Farms. We're going to move inside and show you how everything gets boiled down and works in here. There's the big beast. And over here, I have head sugar maker at Golden Moment Farms, John Banford. And he's going to explain to us the process on everything here. Hi, guys. Uh, this is a high efficiency wood fired evaporator, double blower system, gasification. First, we know smoke uh, and very, very high temperatures. Uh, 
10 times more efficient than the standard evaporator. Uh, up to 2,000 degrees under your front pants. And uh, actually, maybe, Corey, if you want to take a picture of the inside. Yeah, that's a little fire. <laughs> Pans are the same design they had over a hundred years ago. The back pans that were put to have seven inch raised flues. So the flames walk between all the flues. And the front two pans are flat. And it's a continuous process. There's three compartments in the back and four compartments in the front. And as they move along, or you can take your inside. This is an auto, what they call an auto draw off. When, when these two numbers match, it will open a valve and drop it out. And this is all adjustable. And the temperature with sir comes off varies every day between, uh, with high pressure and low pressure. And that's basically it. Very good. So we're not far off of making some more syrup here. This is what you've already made today? Yes, it is. Now we're made with 50 meters. Cool. Okay, and um, Cold Bone Farm window, for the last 10 years or so, we've had uh, reverse osmosis. Basically what it, this machine does, it filters out approximately 75% of the water out of the sap. So the sap coming out of a tree is approximately 2% sugar. It will be 8% sugar coming out of this machine, which saves us a quarter of the fuel supply for the evaporator and a quarter of our time. And then the other corner here is our vacuum pump, which uh, puts negative pressure in, in, in the pipeline system so it helps the sap flow out of the trees and it's much more efficient than just straight gravity. Perfect. Okay.